All right, are we ready? Audio? Yes. Already know. You have audio ready? Sounds like it. Yep. Thank you. All right. Good evening. I can't even speak myself. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for coming to the meeting of the Albemarle County Planning Commission on July 26th. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order and establish a quorum. Could you please do the roll call? Present. Mr. Missile. Present. Ms. Firehawk. Here. Mr. Carazana. Here. Mr. Bivens. Here. Mr. Murray. Here. And Mr. Claiborne. Here. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move on to uh, the consent agenda. There is no, there are no items on the consent agenda. So uh, we'll just move on to the next item, which is the public hearing. CMA 2020001 to Montclair, formerly known as White Gate Village. And I'm turning to staff now. Thank you, Chair Firehawk and members of the commission. Um, before uh, we begin, I would just like to say a few hours ago, we received a request from the applicant about uh, deferring the CMA tonight in this public hearing. And they are here and um, I would turn it over to them to let them come up and make that request formally to the planning commission. Okay, so you've received that request and now we'll hear from the applicant on the, that particular request. Is the applicant present? Thank you. Good evening, uh, Vito and, and yeah, Vito, say it into the mic so yes. we can get it. Good Thank evening, you. Vito Cheddar. I'm the developer. Um, we exchanged a phone call today at four o'clock with uh, one of your one of the county um, important positions, and there's some confusion about uh, some aspect of the uh, of the site that we 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 can't get it, couldn't get it resolved in a couple hours. So I'm sorry about that. I'm very sorry that we have to meet here like this, and, but we hope to be back shortly. So you're you're are you requesting a deferral? Yes, until you can deferral. clarify the answers that you need for this evening. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's a that request that's been made. We need to have a motion to accept the deferral. But I don't know if you have any other questions for the applicant before we entertain that request. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to just to ask about the request to defer, not the specifics of the application itself, because we're not hearing that this evening. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to defer to accept the applicant's request for deferral? I move that we accept the applicant's request to defer ZMA 2020-0012, Montclair. Yes, it's not to a date certain. Not to a date certain. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? I'll just make a note for the public that I'm sorry for the fact that you came out here this evening and you're not going to be able to hear it. You're not going to be able to hear this application this tonight, but I think it's in our best interest to get all the facts straight. And there is a, a there is a number of questions that have been raised about this application that we need to have the answers to and we could not get them in time for this evening. And I will also let you know that some of these questions came in response to questions you all raised. So you asked questions of the commission, questions were asked, and we do not have yet satisfactory answers to those questions. So rather than, I'm sure you're disappointed that you made the effort to come out here and not going to be heard this evening, but I just want to let you know that this is actually the public process working because we did listen to you, we did ask good questions, and we're waiting to have good answers. Uh, if we don't have the right, uh, sir, you're not recognized to speak at this time. So with that, um, is there any other comments the, the commission would like to make? It's, it's not up to the commission. Uh, we can either just, you know, we, we don't have the facts to hear tonight. So any other, anything else? All right, let's call the uh, roll, please, for vote. The Bailey. Aye. Mr. Missile. Aye. Ms. Firehawk. Aye. Mr. Carazana. Aye. Mr. Bivens. Aye. Mr. Murray. Aye. 
And Mr. Claiborne. Aye. All right, so this motion has been deferred to an indeterminate date. We will wait to hear from the applicant as to when they will have the answers to staff's questions and be ready to come back to us. If you'd like to have time to clear the chamber, we'll recess for the next three minutes. Back into order and um, want to point out that there is one other item uh, before that I I actually moved without telling you all. We still have other matters not listed on the agenda from the public. So if there are items that were not on tonight's agenda that you would like to discuss, please come forward and we're ready to hear from you. So is there anyone? And, and also there could be potentially someone online as well. Is there anyone online on other matters? Not at this time. Okay. All right, welcome. Uh, please state your name. I think you know the drill, Mr. Olivier, but uh, the green light goes on when you start and then yellow, uh, you're running out of time and red is time to stop. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tom Olivier. I live in the Samuel Miller District. I've come to speak about the county's growth management policy and the need for significant changes due to climate change. In 2014, then President Barack Obama said, we're the first generation to feel the effect of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it. In 2018, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, alarmed the world when it declared that to escape rapidly worsening, potentially runaway climate change, humanity must reduce new greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030, and become carbon neutral by around 2050. Containing climate change also will require drawing down greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere and otherwise greening human societies. Despite these dire warnings, humanity's greenhouse gas emissions continued to rise. As Washington Post columnist Eugene Robinson noted, we seem headed for barely mitigated doom. What gives? We've been insulating our homes, driving more fuel efficient vehicles, etc. The problem, as the IPCC noted back in 2014, is that most greenhouse gas emissions from the combustion of fossil fuel are driven by population and economic growth. And politicians and business leaders tend to think growth is good, even when it isn't. These points bring us to the county growth policy. It calls for creating new growth areas when existing growth areas show signs of filling up, perhaps until the county reaches full build out, accommodating growth. But the county policy enables the ongoing loss of ecosystems and their ability to sequester carbon. It enables the new greenhouse gas emissions from new developments. It is directly at odds with becoming carbon neutral and at odds with becoming climate resilient. Let's face it, we need a reimagined growth management policy, one that requires limits to our growth so that we can coexist with natural systems that are vital to our survival. As both Obama and the PEC, IPCC noted, the time for effective climate action is short and the clock is ticking, tick tock, Tick tock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very right, apropos for our earlier conversation about the growth plan and all of that. So, anyone else from the public like to speak about an item that's not on the agenda? Good evening. Neil Williamson with the Free Enterprise Forum. I um, recently penned a blog post uh, that highlighted that the growth area boundaries were drawn in 79, 1980. About that same time, 
uh, what I consider a classic movie, Airplane, came out. And uh, in that movie, there's a nine second scene with Leslie Nielsen and the woman that was the actress portraying the stewardess. And she said, he said, well, what did you guys have for dinner? And she says, uh, chicken or fish. And Leslie Nielsen says, oh, I remember, I remember I had the lasagna. This is the answer I think you guys need to have for the comp plan. What if we looked at some other localities? What if we looked at, we've got a lot of wide experiences here and we had a urban core and then we had a suburban area that had different performance standards and different densities and different services. And then we had a transitional area that had different services yet again. And that transitional area might be a little larger than today's growth area. Not a big deal, but a little bit larger would be nice to allow for the growth that your staff is telling you the current comp plan won't adjust based upon 17 units an acre, which you're achieving now. You could come up with performance standards that would have high density, tall buildings, and people in suburban localities wouldn't be upset because those suburban neighborhoods would be in the suburban district. And those high density, tall buildings wouldn't be appropriate there. Just an idea. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on an item not on the agenda? Is there anyone online? No? Not at this time. Okay. Thank you. All right. So with that, we'll close that uh, portion of the meeting and move on um, to committee reports. Does anyone have any committee reports? My historic preservation group did not meet due to lack of quorum. No? No CICs? Okay. All right. No committee reports. Review of the Board of Supervisor meeting. Mr. Rapp. Uh, there were no um, development-related public hearings that evening, so I had that evening off. All right. Mr. We, back. <laughs> all right. Well, we're, we have old business and new business, uh, which we continue to not understand what the difference is. But anyway, <laughs> welcome to our old <laughs> staffer. Thank you. Who is now Great newly returned. Great to be back. Uh, well, on that note, uh, we've talked about it earlier, and I, I would, I would uh, love to visit the topic of our work sessions yes. uh, and get some feedback from you all as to what might be appealing. Um, I think we, we've had a few rounds of both uh, the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive plan. And I think we all see the need for more time. Our consultants have asked for more time as well, and it'll allow us better dialogue. Um, so last time we met, I mentioned the desire to slide across the hall into room 241, our larger conference room there, so we can have more of a collaborative uh, work session, um, a little less of presentation based uh, interaction. And I would like to increase that timeline to 90 minutes or two hours or whatever this this uh, commission might feel comfortable with. I, I would suggest uh, that we go past five and maybe go to 530 and maybe start either at the same time or start a little bit earlier. So I guess I would I would ask for direction from the commission would like a, a four to 530 work or a 330 to 530 or what would be the preference? Um, if that works, everybody's schedules, we could also always go back to another Tuesday of the month if that's preferable, but I think everybody is enjoying the uh, just kind of pack it all into two Tuesdays. But All right. So is that yeah. just to get that on the table, is that yep. everyone still prefers to not have three weeknights rather than Amen. try to have a slight longer one of day? Yeah. Amen. Okay. So that's okay. good still. I think we all like that. Some of us travel for work and it really makes it much easier. Yep. Um, so for the, the question of 90 minutes versus two hours, yep. you know, in some respects, it depends on what the topic is. I mean, there's sometimes there's a, a zoning conversation. We don't need two hours to discuss it. Um, I don't know if it's possible to flex the time, but for a lot of these uh, comp planning discussions, it seems to me like you need two hours to have a real discussion. I feel like we're only just bringing up topics. Like for further discussion sometime in the future, we should really talk about this. And that That's the level of detail we're able to get to in this one hour. So. What are your thoughts? I, I would, I've already like, my afternoon's already sacrificed once I have to come. I, I live, I work in Scottsville, so it's not really that close, <laughs> but I would rather come earlier. That's just me. I'd like to hear from the rest of you guys. So I would like to do two hours and I think tacking on a half hour on either side would be the would, best way to do yeah, it. Yeah, because we don't need an hour for dinner necessarily. We're, we're talking about jogging trails, uh, the web telescope. That's what we do in our 
yeah. power. Yeah. And I, we, we, yeah, and we spend a lot of extra energy working really hard not to talk about planning during that hour. It's actually more stressful. <laughs> yep. Rather be in here. I would echo that suggestion. I think two hours is helpful. I think it does depend on the subject, specific yeah. subject. And there may be times, you know, you call an audible and say, let's just do an hour and a half. There's right. not a lot to cover. Yep. Um, the other thing I think is really yeah, important like is sort that. of the preparation piece of it. And as much as staff can do to help us understand specifics and as much as we can kind of stay to those specifics throughout that time, I think it'd be beneficial and and you know obviously sometimes there are tangents that we have to go off on but um hopefully that's a way we can be most helpful to you yeah which i think is the key definitely i, th I think y'all saw a lot of information we threw at you this time um as a way to prep and we've tried to really pare down our presentation yeah. to maximize our time they were all really major topics yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we we wanted to do more but i was trying to be conscious of that hour and make sure we didn't no, speak for 45 minutes uh but if we had that extra half hour that extra hour we could really kind of go one by one or really dissect those stuff there's no uh shortage of topics to discuss at this point in the process well, I, th I thought it was helpful starting starting broad with those broad themes mm -hmm. and yeah. i mean there's a lot to dive into and and really take that deep dive into a number of those that certainly we can do I, I guess what i would ask in terms of scheduling is as far out in advance as we possibly can, particularly we're trying to schedule like a 3.30 or, four, you know, like I guess that's what we're talking about, 3.30 to 5.30 or something like that. Yep. So I don't know how far out in, out in advance, you know, can we start blocking out? Uh, if we, even if we think, okay, well, you know, in, in this, this Tuesday in August or in September, we're going to, we're going to plan for a work session. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't have all the details yet, but at least we have that hold. Yeah, like and we can get in our calendars. Um, I would say the more the more time, the better. Yeah, um, at least for me. Yeah, I, I would I agree. agree. I mean, thirty minutes is something like a lot. It's a lot for me. Like getting here at three thirty, mm -hmm. and so I love to hear thoughts on you know this plan. This comprehensive plan process will take years, right? So one thought is to do ninety minutes and see how that works, four to five thirty, and then if we find that that's not working, like we did with sixty minutes extended then but um if we if we say it's 3 30 i'll make it work but when you have a day job during the day that 30 minutes is a big deal uh, particularly with some of the jobs that we have so yeah and, and just the challenge of just getting it on the calendar so that we can yeah. hold yeah. it and prioritize it and not have because so, nowadays you know with zoom people meetings people just put all these meetings up and it's like well i have to get to get somewhere yeah yeah that's right <laughs> yeah that's right yeah well I, I can i can guarantee that the fourth tuesday of every month for the next few years we would like to have a work session um it's really the only way we're going to accomplish the comp plan and the zoning ordinance yeah we'll together try to do both. So then we should just right. so, I, so i would so we could we could responding to uh commissioner claiborne we, we could it's let's shoot maybe for starting at four and going to 5 30 for yeah. these this yeah. next one in yeah. august if that feels First, good yeah. if we decide we feel rushed still then maybe we'll adjust after that um but maybe let's try one or two of those and see how those go so I, well, I, I think what one way to achieve that too is you you gave us all the materials ahead yep. for tonight's session we all read them and then the staff represented them. And I know there's other, you know, elucidations that happen when you're saying this point and this point. Yep. But, you know, you can give us a lot of background reading yeah. and not present that. And the other, the other point I would make is that being really specific on what you want from us. Because a lot of times I feel like it's like, so what do you think? Right. Like, what do you broadly think about these eight massive topics? And it's it's really hard to, yeah. like, yeah. what? okay, so what should I pick? Like, Affordability, climate, housing, what you know, like growth air expansion, growth air contraction density. That that was just a lot. And so I'd rather have a lot of background and then cut to the chase of the most specific things that you need us to react to. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's a really good point. So I guess the assumption is assume that we read it. And then, and, I can do that. And, yeah. and, you know, and then and then it's like here's here's the key, you know, so come in and say, okay, you guys have all read it. So here's the key points that we want to discuss today. Yep. So we can focus on those, okay. on those pieces and not, and not yeah. just regurgitate. Well, we yeah. tried to do in this one, I guess I've, here's if, if y'all feel like it worked, uh, was it have that in the memo? Yeah. And so the memo is pretty specific with what we hope to hear from y'all today. Yep. Um, and we'll kind of maybe, so you will, 
dump a lot of info at you. We'll consolidate some specifics in a memo uh, to give you some guidance uh, and go from there. Yeah, that was helpful. Okay. And if you saw today was, uh, we really tried to take a step back at the beginning and show you this flow chart of where we started, where we're going to go, what the different steps are. We're going to try and do that each time so that we kind of, y'all are coming along with us on this journey. Um, and we'll do the same thing with our zoning ordinance in August. Um, I've taken a step back. Kind of resetting a little bit we've had a few work sessions i think we all agree that it needs a little bit of a reset and a different approach and we're going to start taking a look at our administrative sections and the way we formulate our ordinance from a table of contents and then we can start taking a look at the different pieces that we're going to touch and how we're going to address them all rather than diving right into the topics that we have dove into i think we need a little bit of uh of, of a higher level approach and how, how to tackle this over the next few years as well yeah and then i think you as you uh intimated to me a few weeks ago you you then do want to schedule like in this month, we're going to do this yep. and this. So he's going to have that. Okay. This is a zoning ordinance conversation. It's about this and it's quick. Yeah. This is actually really complicated. And, and then maybe these come into two sessions. Yep. I want to push this to three years, but I'm just, saying, right. you know, I'd, I'd rather do a good job than, than cramming things and having Absolutely. these cursory mm -hmm. conversations mm -hmm. that we don't even have time. There could be something, I didn't hear it tonight, but there could be something that we need to come to resolution on. You know, like you said this and you said that, and I said that, and I don't agree with you, but we don't have time to have a dialogue because all we have time to do is give reactions in around Robin and then we're done. And we didn't really actually decide anything yep. in order to give you a unified or at least mostly unified direction. So that's why we need that deliberation time, not just popcorning quick reactions. Yep. Anyway. All right. So anything else anyone wants to add? Or we'll, so we'll try the, the 4 to 5.30 model yep. for a bit, and then we'll work on some master scheduling so we can plug in what those things are. And I think then that could help with questions like, when are we going to discuss the rural area in more depth? Or you know, Because I think all of, us, all of us want to talk about... <laughs> The, yep. Even just that idea of like, as, as uh, our speaker just said, uh, you know, this notion of, is it just like all the suburban areas become cities and, you know, like, or, or is there suburban feeling areas and, you know. Yeah, there's a lot to, a lot to explore. Uh, and I think we're all eager to get into some of those fun <laughs> topics. <for sure. laughs> okay. and, and I think we've all agreed that there are definitely areas that would benefit from more density. Right. And, right. and it's, and it, but it's help, nuanced. It it's not like, right. It would help with. With, yeah. with the housing issue, right? If we get more density, perhaps you can actually do something more meaningful with 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 low income housing. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And I think all of us want to get get away from that notion of this is the urban area, and then that's just all that urban stuff goes in there. And then this is the rural area, and it's kind of like fantasy nirvana land where people ride <laughs> tractors and horses, and it's all very bucolic, and they don't ever need to get their oil changed, you know. So yeah, I mean, you know, they do it themselves. And it, you know, you know, the, I, I agree with all that. And the other thing that's making this hard as you, as we do this, but what is the future of work? I mean, yeah, a lot has changed. A lot is changed and changing. Right? No. Yep. And so if we're doing this for the next 20 years, like we have to consider that. And those I think requires some conversation and, and understanding about what is it today and what does work look like in Charlottesville, Abermall County in, in the coming 20 years. Absolutely. Okay. So. I think we have resolved that question. Is there any other new business to bring up besides our schedule? Meeting of life, yes. anything? Yes. Ah, yes, there is. There is a new thing. <laughs> Each day, this particular day is a significant new day for one of our members. One of our members who happens to have a sport jacket on. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just has just crossed the significant threshold in his life. He's 29 today. That's right. He's, he's 29. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. It's his, it's, his, it's his Groundhog 29 day. Thank and you. And so man. on behalf of uh, which other people will join in, happy birthday. Thank yes, you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Feels good to be 29. <laughs> it does. I tell you what, particularly don't tell our father. On that note, any other items for any other items for follow up? All right. Well, with that, then, and again, apologies to anyone who may be listening in Cyberland. We're sorry that we had to defer that hearing, but it is what it is. I want to have a good process. So, with that, 
Thank you all for coming and we will adjourn to the next meeting of the commission, which is August 9th. Thank you.